Uh, you guys ready for Infinimiz? Nah, we don't need Infinimiz. Um... Alrighty. Monitor. Let's get rid of that so you can actually see. Let's do this. We're gonna pause that. Alright, you ready? Look guys, I actually spelled San Francisco correctly. <laughs> oh my god, I'm never gonna live that down. Alright, here we go. You guys ready? Tell me if it's too loud. Uh, it might be a little loud, it might not be loud enough, I'm not sure. But, let's do it. Just song request it? No, because then I can't, um, I can't pause it and stuff as I want, so. Let's go. Here we go. Hi. Hold on. I just realized. Hi. Hi, everyone. It's me, Ms. Tech. All right. How's sound check? Hi, everyone. Ms. Tech here at the North America. You good? It's good? OK. Why are you saying no sound? I haven't paused. That's why. All right, I just wanted to do that so you can guys can actually test test the sound of my voice because that's how I'm going to be talking. Fran Francisco, I definitely should do that next time. All right, let's start again. <laughs> Here we go. Hi everyone, Ms. Tech here. At the North American Media Tour for Shadowbringers, I had the honor and privilege of interviewing your sheepy himself. Oh, shit. I didn't pause it fast enough. For Shadowbringers. I had the honor and privilege of interviewing your sheepy him. Ah, uh, this is a visual pun, if you will. Do you get it? The man, the myth, the legend. But there is also a title in the game. The legend. When you clear Yukob. Ha 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 ha. Hilarious. Himself. <laughs> Here are his- Should I turn it up? Okay. His thoughts on a few of those questions. Question 1. Since the way jobs play out at level 80 is about to be drastically changed with all of the battle system changes, how will the ultimate coil of Bahamut and the weapons refrain ultimate be balanced for future clears? I think- Um, this is actually a question from Baked. Baked, if you're in chat, thank you. Ultima will have the most recognizable changes, especially in the tank role. With the original concept of how to beat these ultimate content, we made it so that we don't have two tanks taking on the enemy, but there is sort of a responsibility that each tank had. We made sure to adjust it so that you'd still be able to clear the content. With the job updates, of course, you'll see a difference with updates that it does. That are made do that. for the different roles, including the tanks, and how those updates will be affected. It won't be major or significant effects, so to speak. We made sure to go and adjust it so that it is still clearable. And in terms of healer and how they work with their actions and some of their heal work that they do, they may see a difference from previous clears. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this question. So this is actually one of the questions that suffered from it the most. Uh, I don't know if that was like a clear answer, because... So you know how we have to like, basically, I asked the question, Amy translates, uh, Yoshipi answers, she translates back. And so there, this answer was a little like disjointed in a sense. Um, so I apologize for like the awkward sort of flow of the, the answer because I was basically just speaking what he, they spoke to me, right? Um, and so basically what they're saying is that they have fine or they've made sure that it's still clearable with all of the changes that they've done. Um, it might be different than what you're used to. So say you are kind of, you have this like muscle memory as a tank or a healer uh, going into UCOB that you've known for like the past eight months or whatever since you're clear. And then you go in with all the new changes, you're going to have to rework some of the, the thinking that goes into your actual clear, perhaps some of the cooldown rotations that you use, but they did make sure that it was still clearable. So you might have to go through like a little bit of extra prog perhaps with all the new stuff, but... Uh, for the most part, I don't think it'll be So that to bad. speak, we made sure to go and adjust it so that it is still clearable. And in terms of healer and how they work with their actions and some of their heal work that they do, they may see a difference from previous clears. <laughs> Question two. Moving on from ultimate to crafting. Beast tribes that can be used to level up crafters and gatherers have been historically released near the middle of expansions in 2.35, 3.3, 4.3. 3. Are there any plans or thoughts on introducing the DOH, DOL tribes sooner in the expansion to help players level the jobs earlier? Actually, there are discussions. This is question from Solar. 
Which is why he's saying a brilliant question. It's about whether or not we should make adjustments on when this timing happens. But right now we are still sort of trying to solidify the overall balance of the different content that's going into the 5.x series, and that will be finalized around the end of June. So I think once we have that nailed down, we'll be able to provide update. Okay, so it's actually kind of cool that they're considering offering uh, the Gathering or the Beast Tribe Gatherer, whatever, uh, Crafter gra Gatherers, there we go, Crafter uh, Beast Tribes a lot sooner, because obviously for me, I don't have to wait until like forever to do them, so that's nice to level up at least. But something that was really important that he said in this answer is this. Uh, we are still trying to sort of solidify the overall balance of the different content that's going into the 5.x series. That will be finalized around the end of June. Early access is June 28th. So all of the times that I have constantly said that they are literally working on changing all the tooltips, the potencies, the whatever, everything that goes into the actual battle system balance of the game, that is going on literally until like almost literally the day before the expansion releases for those of us that have pre-ordered, right? So I think that's actually pretty important for people to realize that they are actively working this entire month on balance. So the stuff that you saw from us from the media event and even the EU media event from literally like a month before this month, uh, it's gonna be updated, it's gonna be changed. So a lot of the theory crafting and stuff, while I appreciate it and I admire it and stuff like that, there's really, we don't have like crazy solid information yet, you know? So, you know, don't freak out so much guys. All right. Right, Ride updates. Go. Question three. With Viera and Rothgar being the last new races to be introduced to the game, are there any plans on adding more base customization options to the established races? As long as it doesn't affect the shape of the body or the different faces, and if these are in fact the last races that we are going to be adding, then there is a possibility that we might expand on the customizable element. If the customization involves changing the shape of the face or the body, we would have to address all the different gear that the character can equip, and with the sheer volume of how much gear we have, we would have to go in and manually update. It's quite difficult. Rather than that, we might have to look at it when we cross the bridge, but if it's a customization option that significantly changes the shape of the race's body, I think we would be better off to tackle the challenge of just introducing a new playable race altogether and okay so for the longest time it was believed perhaps maybe more so from by me but than other people but so the reason that they made uh like the two new playable races or i can't remember if it was like the last live letter or the live letter before that but they were basically saying that these were the last playable races that they were making because of just how much manpower and effort went into creating a playable race, you know? And so I remember thinking and even like talking about it on stream, how I was like, oh, that's like, it's a little sad to hear that, that these could be the last two races that we get new in the expansion, right? And here, this answer kind of makes me think, oh my gosh, that's not solid that's not set in stone or anything right and so for them to just be like considering how like annoying it is to like create all these different customization we might as well just make a new race that's exciting for me because i feel like it's uh i don't know it like doesn't close the door on a bunch of other stuff or <laughs> limited races could you imagine uh so that was actually pretty exciting to hear because he did kind of seem like he was definitely not set on them being the very last thing uh, or very last set of races that they would make. So all I get from this answer is that there's no real hope for butt and boob slayers. <laughs> yeah, because we're changing the overall shape of the body, right? Uh, did they say that this will be the last two races ever? They were talking about um, the weight or the amount of work that went into creating uh, the two races, that it's just so much that they can't see themselves doing it again. So that's kind of why. Uh, it was like assumed or basically implied that they would never do it again. Uh, what other races would they add? Namazu, obviously. I would totally play Namazu. They could add like the wolf people. I don't know. I don't know what they would do, but you know, it's kind of interesting that the door has been cracked open. Instead. Question four. Final Fantasy XIV has had an issue or a feature when actively changing sound channel outputs in the windows that will make you lose in-game sound until you restart the game. Is there any plan to fix this in the future? Unfortunately- This was answered before 
that second live letter. Just keep that in mind. It's a matter not on the game side. It's more on the sound engine of the system devices or the devices that the player is utilizing and how those are set up. And so, of course, by having that issue, the issue is caused because it's separate from the Final Fantasy client itself, and it lies more on the device side. And by having that separated out, we are able to deliver sound content that doesn't eat up a lot of memory and still have that high quality. So it's sort of an exchange, like, which do we sacrifice? It's not something that we can address, sorry. Okay, so... Again, uh, this was answered before they had all those issues at the live letter. And I feel like maybe with the issues at the live letter, maybe they would like, you know, perhaps it wasn't, it didn't, it wasn't deemed as much of a crazy, this is me speaking for them. So this is not actually an answer, but think about it. You know, like, I feel like considering how kind of frustrating and stressful that was for them during the live letter to deal with that issue, literally live. I feel like maybe they could see it more of an issue. Anadeus, were you saying that this is a relic of 1.0? Like it's the system that they had in place for 1.0? And since that was like so many years ago that they, I don't know. Uh, that's why you use voice meter. Yeah, I kind of wanted to add that into this somewhere and just be like, here's the solution if you do suffer from this. Like here's something that you could do, but I don't really think that's my place, so whatever. Um, shirking to driver developers, maybe. Um, it does kind of seem like it is something that's, you know, like, uh, a product of the engine from back then, and they just never, like, updated or ever decided to change it, so it kind of does suck that it's not something that they can easily fix and, like, easily change or whatever, um, and I guess it does make sense that if it is, like, I've, I've never really paid attention to how much of a memory hog sound is in other games, I guess, so maybe if it does help, uh, avoid worse issues then you know what can you do but mm, i don't know i kind of hope that from from the previous answers of the questions it seems like nothing is ever really set in stone right and if it ever becomes a huge issue they are willing to like look at stuff so i don't know i feel like the casual yeah the fall damage <laughs> i jumped off of a tower um so it does suck that there's like no instant whatever and you kind of do have to do this like third party program to to save you from that uh but what can you do? I figured I would ask, why not? Like, which do we sacrifice? It's not something that we can address, sorry. Question five. So with New Game Plus being introduced to allow the potential replayability of the MSQ, is there any possibility of adding challenge modes to the earlier dungeons where you can play those again at a higher difficulty? For example, you would have to run through Sestatia to do part of the MSQ. However, when you do it on New Game Plus, is there an added difficulty, or are you still level sync down to the original version? The New Game Plus doesn't just apply to the MSQ. When you do approach previous dungeon content, if you allow for level sync, it will sync that down to its original content, and you have the option to not have your level synced and go into it in a powerful state. However, there isn't going to be an added challenge, so to speak, so you'll be going into the dungeon at its original level. Question 6 No. Oh shit, I wrote question 5, and it's question 6, my bad. I'm gonna fix that before I, <laughs> I actually said it live on YouTube. Um, okay, so this kind of disappointed me um, because, again, so the New Game Plus style or system that I am used to, I literally have only ever experienced it in Dark Souls, in Bloodborne, in, I guess, God of War, technically. Um, and so in my experience with those other games or what i assume is what new game plus standards are is that you're gonna have like increased difficulty or whatever right exactly so what terulia is saying is that it's not entirely like new game plus in the same traditional sense that i would imagine it to be it's just the ability to just go through it again so i don't even think like the msq itself is gonna have any sort of um increase in difficulty or whatever Let me write that down so I actually don't forget. Or here, I'll just start up a notepad. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So it kind of just seems like it's going to be the same thing. You'll just happen to be level 70. And when you do those side quests and stuff, you can take down. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of kind of okay. The fact that you can just do the MSQ again and still get XP rewards in the same manner again, I think is fantastic. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not, like, supremely disappointed. But I'm, like, forever wanting this, like, 
extra challenge in a lot of this extra parts of the game and you'll see with the next question just what I mean but I don't know I just feel like it would be cool if there was some sort of added difficulty to it but kind of sucks that there isn't so oh well no big deal however that also also means that you can definitely do the MSQ replay again and still be like unsynced in Sestasha and unsynced in like Brayflox you know all those instances that you have to run for the the quest but you can run them at level 80 right that's kind of cool or whatever level 70. so that's kind of in a powerful state however there isn't thought. going to be an added challenge so to speak so you'll be what is the purpose of new game plus kane i think it's just an alternate avenue for leveling so if you don't want to do palace of the dead if you don't want to do fate grinding if you don't want to do whatever you can basically take because obviously you get a ton of xp from the sorry you guys can't see me I'm like talking at you and you can't see me. <laughs> uh, but I feel like MSQ leveling is like the fastest leveling, right? Because you're you're following this like structured leveling system that gives you like a bunch of XP whenever you finish those big quests. So I think it's just an, another way to level, um, especially being able to level your alternate classes with that MSQ bonus or extra XP that you would generally miss out on by not being able to do it again. So I, I would like I would use that to level instead of uh, maybe doing like excessive Palace of the Dead or whatever. All right, next. Going into the dungeon at its original level. Question six. Question to add six, on to guys. that last question, are there thoughts of ever creating ever increasing difficulty mode for those past dungeons, similar to the Mythic Plus system in World of Warcraft? It's something that could possibly be considered, but that means it would take away efforts on creating new content. Okay, okay. So I asked basically this exact same question at the Stormblood media event. And back then, they said no. Like, he basically just said no. Like, it's cool, but no. And here, it's something that could possibly be considered. So that is a, an upward trend in the, in, the, in the possibility, potential. And so I was excited. Okay, here we go. Or the patch cycles might get delayed. It's actually been brought up a few times with regards to WoW and end content like that. And if we were allowed to take as much time as WoW does, we might be able to Shade. accomplish something very similar. But we would like to keep our major patch update schedule as we currently have it. It would be difficult to juggle both keeping that consistent schedule and including more difficult content. But we are definitely impressed by the system that WoW does employ in their dungeons, where there are ever increasing levels and the systems that they have for the gear sets and whatnot. It's really well made. Maybe if we had double the number of people in the battle system team, the battle content team, our QA team, oh and uh, one more Yoshida. He was making jokes because he was like laughing this entire time saying this. Um, but yeah, so, oh my god, like, think about it. Think of this game having the resources that WoW does. Like, just the dev team size that, you know, this bigger game has. And so, a lot of what's keeping them back, at least from what I gathered from the implications, you know, like, a lot of what's keeping them back is just having a much, much, like, so much smaller dev team than a lot of these massive, massive games. And what Anna Day said earlier was actually like struck the chord perfectly. If they received the funding that they deserve, like the, the, the help and like the people, the bodies, whatever that they deserve, oh my God, this game would be brilliant, you know? Like, dude, try to imagine this game if it had the full force for them to be able to do everything that they wanted, you know? Oh my God, it would be so, so cool. So. It's a little sad and heartbreaking as like someone that loves this game and is so passionate about this game that wants to see all these little different things implemented, but knows that it's just physically not possible sometimes, especially because they do want to keep that patch cycle going. It's like heartbreaking sometimes because you want so much more, but there's like the physical limitations on the dev team, right? Um, not anymore, Midnight, for sure. Like their dev team probably is definitely not as, as big anymore, but in its prime, the, the number of people working on it, I think, was like pretty significant. Way bigger than ours, right? Ah, it's too, yeah, Kickstarter for your CP for sure. But I don't think he needs just money. I think he needs like physical bodies, like physical developers, physical QA team, all that stuff. Like he said, one more Yoshida. Um, but yeah, I dude, it would be so cool. So it is a, a bit of a shame that we wouldn't be able to see, uh, you know, challenge mode, mythic, mythic plus, whatever, savage plus, if you will. But 
Uh, I will say that this answer was a lot more positive than the first answer that they gave me because before it was like, no, it's not really something we can do. And now they're like, you know, we're like we're pretty impressed by the system. We like it. We're, we're, I don't know. I feel like they researched it a bit more, maybe like tried it themselves to see how it was done. And for them to like commend WoW and saying that it's a really well-made system, that was super cool, I thought. I don't know. Frosty asked about updating Chocobo Racing, and I was shocked that he said it was one guy, and he got promoted to race. So there's no one on Chocobo Racing now? Oh, man, that sucks. But at the same time, I feel like not a lot of people do Chocobo Racing, which maybe is like a vicious cycle because people don't really do it because there's not a lot of, like, content that goes into it because there's only one person, and now there is no other person. You know, like, it's probably just, like, ugh. You know? He couldn't devote resources to it. Yeah. <laughs> It's too bad. Chocobo racing is actually kind of fun, though. Like, if they made it just straight, like, um, Mario Kart, I, I don't know. I think it's really fun. All right, moving on. Let's see. Question here. seven. Is there any right. possibility of ever offering higher difficulty 24-man content, either extreme or savage difficulty? When we did Baldesian Arsenal and having that content where a lot of people are going into it at the same time and receiving the feedback that a lot of people did enjoy the content, I think that opened up the possibility for us to consider not just 24-man raids, but content where a lot of people can join in on the raid. So this is kind of like one of those questions. Oh yeah, so I guess maybe I should preface all of this with the whole what happened at the interview. So I made a bunch of questions uh, like I did last year. And uh, last year or whatever, previous year or previous media event, we were we went in with two people. So two people interviewed at once and you would ask alternating questions. So all in all, you only really had like five minutes or five questions or time for five individual questions or so. So when I made out my list of questions, I was like, I got to prioritize these like from whatever order of etc um order of interest i guess and the problem is they were like oh miss your interview is at like 4 30 uh but you're by yourself and i was like ah, by myself um and so i actually was able to ask a bunch of these like rant not random but like not as important questions and so uh there was like a little bit of interest in this question so i put it in because i figured why not um but yeah, it would be a little crazy to have Savage 24 minutes, you think? But I was actually pretty surprised with this answer because um, it's interesting to see that because of the like awesome feedback that they've gotten from BA and from the BA instance, or I guess BA is the instance, uh, I meant to say Eureka and the Eureka instance, um, that they are actually considering. Like it kind of, it kind of seems in the way that he answered that perhaps they didn't think it would be as popular as it was, so they were just like trying it or whatever and didn't really think that they would carry on with it. But now they're like, man, this is actually a great success. People actually really like this. Maybe we should like look into having this uh, more like larger raid content stuff or whatever. Um, I don't know, it's pretty cool. Kananda, thank you so much for the resub. I'm so sorry that the thing didn't work. I didn't hear the alert. I don't know what happened, but hype for you, my friend. Thank you for your continued support. You're awesome. Okay, next, let's go. Question eight. Question eight. Question eight. That actually answers my next question too a bit, but I'll ask it anyway to see if we can elaborate on it a little more. So I personally believe that Eureka and the Baldesian Arsenal were great successes and they offer a fantastic and epic challenge to players that actually make it to the end. What are the developers' thoughts on this style of content and are there plans on doing something similar in the future? Through our experience doing the Diadem as well as Eureka and getting all the feedback from the players through these kinds of exploratory content, we have taken reference and are making plans to bring some sort of exploratory and also challenging type of content sometime during the patch 5.x series. Of course, there are different ideas. I have my own ideas, the team back in Japan have their own ideas that take into account some of the learning points from the Eureka content and sort of corrected the pain points of that same content. So after we conclude this media tour and once the team has sort of finalized all the balancing of the Shadowbringers content, then we will start further discussions and begin the game design of the upcoming content. So once we do have that information become available, we will definitely make it known. Okay, so a couple things here in this answer. Number one, I was actually kind of surprised to hear that uh, like Yoshida has his own ideas and then the team in Japan has their own ideas. Because for, for whatever reason, I always thought of it in my head that like everything kind of spawned with Yoshida and then like the team made it happen. But it seems like it's 
different. I don't know. I guess I don't know how to play, how to make video games, I guess. But <laughs> it was really cool to see him say that he has like a different idea than what the team has. And it kind of makes me wonder what those different ideas are, but I didn't want to like pry or whatever. So that's kind of cool to see because you kind of see a little bit more into like the, the inner workings of things, which is kind of cool. Teamwork, I know. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, da, 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 da. So I know a lot of you guys in chat are like, oh my God, Eureka is terrible. But no, I feel like it wasn't, it was like way better than Diadem. It was not even that bad of a grind. And um, BA is like, I think the crowning glory on Eureka. So if you haven't really done BA because you don't like Eureka, then that's a problem. But the fact that they do count or they put in, um, so they take the best learning points from it and then they correct the pain points. And they actually said that a couple times in a, in a couple of the questions that I asked them. So I think they know that, you know, Pago's grind was horrible. Pago's uh, map perhaps was just like completely obnoxious and like uh, they corrected those. You can kind of see like even in Pyros and Hydatos, there's a little bit of correction to some of the weird uh, grindiness to some of the things and like, I don't know, I feel like they actively take in the feedback and then apply it to what they're releasing. Um, another thing to Content. know is kind of near the end. Oopsies, spoilers. Uh, right here. So well, after we conclude the media tour, once the team has sort of finalized the balancing of Shadowbringers content, again, uh, same thing. They're literally still working on 5.0. Like that is their main focus. And like they were going to work on that all the way until the expansion, right? And then they can start working on a lot of the stuff. So I know a lot of people are disappointed, like, oh, no one talked about crafters. No one talked about uh, like the housing or like rebuilding, whatever. No one really talked about the farm system. No one talked about this and that and that. And I think it's honestly because they're so focused on getting the expansion at the door. And that is number one priority over anything. Uh, even like Eureka or the Ultimates, a lot of, you know, there's not really a lot of information on all that stuff. And so I think this is why, again, we're dealing with like a really small dev team, which bless their hearts. They're so fucking good at this. But because of their physical limitations, they can literally only do one thing at a time, right? They can only focus on their top priorities at a time before, you know, worrying about Eureka or even worrying about all the other stuff. So I think that was very interesting to like learn about them or whatever. All the balance. They're human, guys. They're human. Okay. To become available, we will definitely make it known. Question nine. Any plans to eventually add glamour dresser functionality to private housing or apartments? We do acknowledge that there is a request for it, and it's something that we definitely want to make happen. But there are some factors we need to consider. Namely, having multiple people access the dresser at the same time, and the mechanical process behind it is very unstable and risky. If it were a private in an apartment or a chamber that is your own and only your own, it is technically possible. But if it's simply an estate being set to private, then there is still that risk of multiple people accessing it, and it ties back to that issue that we have. It's quite difficult to put our finger on it, but we acknowledge that it's something that we want to look into, and it is part of our task list. It might still take some time since we do want to complete other tasks first and we'll eventually get to the issue. Again, so that kind of just sounds like a low priority thing. But what surprised me, honestly, is this issue that they have. So again, I don't I don't know how it is to like develop this stuff or whatever. Uh, so I'm like complete lay person when it comes to this. So I'll do my best to try to understand it. But if someone in chat has insight perhaps to how this is programmed, you can tell me. So having multiple people access the dresser at the same time is kind of really strange to me because I feel like there's a ton of systems in the game already where multiple people access, like the market board, for example, right? The market board doesn't crash if you try to buy something that has already been bought in the time that you're looking at it, right? It usually just says item and not available, whatever. So I'm, I was kind of surprised that something as simple to me as a glamour system would have this sort of unstable mechanical process behind it. Um, and I wonder if it's because of the way that they've created it. So the fact that it's like storage or whatever, I don't know. Database limitations. Yeah, it probably is like maybe some sort of server limitation, database limitation. Um, but that kind of makes me wonder, like, why did they implement that system in the first place if it's this unstable or risky, as they say, right? And so if it's that unstable and risky, would it not just make sense to like completely just overhaul it? Maybe that's wishful thinking on my part since I absolutely hate the system as it is right now, but 
it was kind of weird to, to, to hear that because I didn't realize it was such like a, a server load or a server risk or whatever for multiple people to have access to that type of, uh, or to that subsystem, whatever. The FC chest uh, checks the hissy fit if more than people are trying to use it. I guess maybe it is kind of around the same because it's the same uh, idea of like a database or a storage system, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Why didn't the devs implement this? <laughs> Again, maybe that's just like limited, like physical. Their own. It is technically possible, but if it's simply in a. So private system. So that made me start thinking. I guess it makes sense why it's only like the in room right? Fantastic, Mr. Scott. Thank you so much for continuing your gift sub. I appreciate you. I don't know why all of a sudden uh, my alerts aren't working. I don't know if Twitch is acting up again or if it's on my end, but I see you in chat and I appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Scott. You're, you're great. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Um, so, because right now we have to go into an in room, right? And so the in is basically probably the only place in the game, I believe, that is truly your own instance. Like, you, no one can enter it. No one else can be inside the same instance as you. Um, and so I guess that makes sense that that's why the, currently the only place to do glamour crap is in that room. Uh, squadron room? Yeah, it's true, I guess. I was thinking, like, the crafting workshop, but that's not uh, your own thing either. And so it's kind of weird. Like, I never really thought of it that way, you know, like, uh, because, okay, so if you think about what's inside that in room, so you have the aesthetician, you have your journal, like your cutscene book, whatever, uh, you have the glamour chest, right? And like the little mini games or whatever. And I feel like the aesthetician, the, gl the journal now is also available. Uh, to put elsewhere, like not just inside that in room. You can put it in your in your housing, your FC house, your private house, your apartment, whatever. And so to me, I was like, oh, why wouldn't they just add a new item like the glamour dresser, like they've done with these other systems? And I never really thought of it as a very specific system that requires you to be completely by yourself, right? So I don't know. I uh, I kind of wonder, like maybe it would be nice to have either a completely different system or the ability to do your glamour plates or wherever, but it's kind of interesting because I don't know if have, they've ever really talked about that before, right? I don't know. Anyway, moving on, shall we? State being set to private, then there is still that risk of multiple people accessing it. I don't know what we want, and it is. It still takes some time since we do want to complete other tasks first, and we'll eventually get to the issue. Mm -hmm. Question ten. Recently, I've been hearing from a lot of new players that the post ARR MSQ chain is significantly long and can potentially deter them from continuing their journey into Heaven's Word. Is there any plan to address this issue in the future? We would love to, yes. We'd love to just have another meteor and another calamity and just reset it all. But it is definitely something that is worrisome and it causes us to be very torn on it because we want to do it, but when is the appropriate timing? You know, both I and the development team want to focus on bringing new and exciting content. And so, of course, the plans are there. I think we're just trying to determine when is the best it's an optimal timing <laughs> um okay so what i learned from this set of interview or this set of questions is that yoshi b's got jokes like literally he's probably like really funny uh in real life um because he was making like all sorts of jokes about like this and, like one more yoshida one more dev team whatever um and just with this like the way he said it like i was I was laughing like an idiot, you know? Um, so <laughs> I think when they first redid ARR, they didn't really expect it to be this popular, <laughs> maybe. Uh, and so they definitely learned, I think, right? From the Realm Reborn 5.0 and beyond, or 5.0, uh, 2.0 and beyond quest line. Like, I think they, it was kind of like a, a labor of love. So they kind of just did whatever. And then with Heaven's Word, they looked back and were like, okay, that's like maybe just a bit too much. And so they, they I feel like you can definitely see the evolution of them learning from the stuff that they do. Uh, but it's really funny that he just said, oh man, I wish we just had another meteor and we just like changed it all and fixed it all in one, one fell swoop. Uh, but it's kind of like a cute answer to a question. Uh, so I guess we probably won't have you know, any changes there. The only like saving grace is that the people that are going through it the first time don't find it that bad, right? Cause it's like the first time they've gone through it and it's just tedious a little bit and whatever, and it's still exciting and fun. Um, 
But for those of us that are leveling alternate ca characters or whatever, or they've already gone through it and they're they're sick of it or whatever, they're sick of Minfilia, um, by the time that we get through it, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Just by the air, our story skip. Yeah, I think that's probably the best case. All right, next. It's on bringing new and exciting content. And so, of course, the plans are there. I think we're just trying to determine when is the best and optimal timing. Question 11. Are there any plans to introduce a challenge mode or arena style encounter for each job similar to the mass carnival for Blue Mage? Are you trying to kill us? Ha ha. <laughs> I can't believe I said ha ha. Uh, but yeah, so. If we could delete all of the jobs, maybe. But joking aside, the Blue Mage content will be updating in Shadowbringers as well. We'll be raising the level cap as well as making updates to the Mass Carnival content. And I think it's going to be pretty challenging and is something that players can be excited about. Okay. <laughs> uh, Miz, you said it all, but the text said half. Yeah. Wait, where? Delete half of the jobs. Oh yeah, you're right. I guess I should fix that. Um... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Did you miss the butt slider question? Our third or fourth question or something was about uh, changing base customization uh, for the established races and stuff, Omega. And he said that uh, anything that changes like the body shape as it currently is, uh, it completely affects all of the gear that they have to do, whatever. Um, and so he kind of insinuated that because of how much work that is in the first place, it's probably just even easier to just make a new race to begin with. So no butt slider confirmed, yes or no, but you know, a little bit more insight there. Um, so <laughs> again, poor Yoshi P probably thinks I'm trying to kill him with all of this like extra PVE content that I would love to see. Um, I think it would be cool just like having sort of like a challenge mode arena style, like test your might type thing for all of the jobs, kind of like, if Stone Sea Sky was like on crack, that's what I'm thinking. But again, this is just like random little questions that we, we came up with. Um, it is nice to see that Blue Mage content, the fact that he says that it's gonna be pretty challenging uh, is kind of exciting to me. Like right now, obviously my Blue Mage is completely like gathering dust and I don't really care about it. And I haven't even done half of the, well, I haven't done any of the abilities except for like the three that I already have. So it's cool to, to imagine something that is actually challenging because I think as it stands now from what people have been told, telling me and the reason I haven't really like gone out of my way to completely get all the abilities is because no one has really said oh my gosh the uh, mass carnival has been amazing here and there or whatever right I haven't really heard good feedback from it so for me it doesn't make me want to play it um, but hearing this like hearing I don't know that's how it's like the carrot on the stick from Miztech pretty challenging is like what I would love to see. So I would love, love, love to, I don't know, get ready for that, I guess, if that makes sense. So that's exciting to hear. Osiris, I'm sorry my alerts are completely broken. I appreciate you though. Thank you so much for the resub. Let's see. Hey Miz, you passed your trial for your new static. Couldn't have done it without you and your guides. Thank you and look at our babies growing. Yeah, Osiris, that's awesome. I hope you really like your new group. I hope they're fantastic. I hope you guys are awesome. Okay, let's keep going. Question 12. Any plans to allow gardening plots and apartments for players who may not have access to crossbreeding otherwise? That would be difficult to make happen in an apartment. That being said, there is a new type of content coming soon that involves something like a farm, and we hope that is something that players can get excited about. All right. All right. Getting, uh, getting some Mr. Pandaria vibes, getting some, uh, you know, Stardew Valley vibes. Um... I don't know if I had a dream about this, but I think they've mentioned this before, right? Right? Didn't they talk about farming, like, forever ago? Maybe at FanFest. Could it have been at FanFest? Because in my memory, I thought it was something, sometime along the same time that they had announced the expansion. Yeah, okay, so I'm not crazy, all right. Uh, but we don't, we have like no information on it essentially, right? Um, I wonder what this is gonna be like because I obviously really like farming in a lot of games. Um, I think, I mean, in in MOP, I uh, like the farming was okay. It wasn't like as cutesy and fun and as exciting as I would have have liked. But if it's something like Stardew Valley, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> I like how Stellu's like, no, why? <laughs> um, however, so what I'm thinking, 
because of the way, because of the question that I technically asked originally and the way that they answered it, here's my interpretation of this. So my question was, can we do gardening uh, plots in apartments? So in this like area where perhaps you don't have an FC or if you're just by yourself, Killing Edge, thank you so much for the resub. I appreciate you so much. Thanks guys for keeping the hype in chat because my alerts aren't working. So uh, thanks for, you know, doing it yourself. I appreciate that. Okay, so the question was, can we do plots, gardening plots in these solo uh, domiciles, right? These solo homes, whatever, where you currently cannot do cross breeding, right? Because you can have potted plants, but you can't have like, uh, like the consecutive adjoining tiles of planting, right? That's what people are explaining to me. So I wonder if this farm is going to be like a, like a true instance where you get to go in by yourself and you change everything by yourself or whatever, right? Like, could that be, I don't know. I feel like it would allow for a lot more stuff, you know, if you're not, um, I guess, restricted by current server issues, perhaps. Um, something like Chocobo Stables. Like Housing and Wildstar. Yeah, I would love that. Oh my gosh. Housing and Wildstar would be so cool. But I don't know, because if it's something that is supposed to be attached to your FC or your um, um, your guild house or whatever, your uh, private house, and it's not an apartment, how could you also do it if you were in an apartment, you know? I don't know. My brain's like kind of exploding with all the possibilities and the potential so a farm that you get to customize yeah i think that'd be really cool i don't know if that's actually what's gonna happen i i mean that's just i'm thinking i'm trying to like put together stardew value Val, stardew valley and uh like wild star housing together that would be like the biggest wet dream for me but i honestly don't know we'll see instance gardens would be cool yeah because think about it uh because the way that people customize and go nuts with their housing right now try to imagine doing that but with gardens i think it would be so beautiful and so pretty yeah wet dream i i'm not afraid to say it i'm a nerd <laughs> i have <laughs> wet dreams about video games don't you <laughs> next question 13 what are the future plans for treasure maps and shadow bringers and is it possible that we'll be able to stack them this is another solar question, just FYI. Fortunately, no plans at the moment. The reason for not having them stackable is that the reward associated with having these maps is very high, and that's how we add value to the maps. If we were to enable stacking of the maps, we would have to consider significantly reducing the value that the rewards associated with these have. We do understand that a lot of people have their retainers hold on to their different maps, but that extra hassle is what makes it so valuable. You hear that? The hassle bull bu bullshit. I was gonna, so you wrote bullshit, and I was trying to read your name, and I said bull bolu is what I was trying to say. Anyway, but um, yeah, there you go, Solu. Uh, so your uh, your ploy to try to get me to do more maps has just been shot down by the man, the myth, the legend himself. Uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense, you know, the, the, the difficulty in like handling these maps to begin with is what makes the, the stuff so rare or so valuable. Um, I guess it makes sense now why they don't stack it. Cause I would rather they not stack it and us have like a higher chance of getting good stuff than, you know, having to deal with all that bullshit RNG or extra RNG, I guess, if it's lower value. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it's a huge huge pain in the ass to try to do maps to begin with right and there's a whole lot of like all right let me go to my retainer and pick up this map okay hold on let me open this map and like pick up a second map from this extra retainer and like you know it's it's clunky basically um <laughs> you have you can have 30 maps right now really without uh bonus retainers that's exciting but who does maps right Anyway, Question 14. Will the story of Eureka continue or is that over? Yes, it has ended with this last patch. <laughs> this is like the <laughs> shortest question in the history of questions. Uh, yes, Eureka is done. It's over. Um, the next rendition of Eureka or whatever it's going to be called, the next exploratory slash whatever content is going to be completely different, completely new. Next we're over, we're done, we're good. 
Question 15. The Baldesian arsenal, having no in-game system to form and coordinate groups, has forced the creation of very intimate communities for each data center that harken back to old-school MMO environments. Personally, I love this perhaps unintentional effect on the community, but I'd love to know the developers' thoughts on this, whether it was intended or expected, and can we hope to see more of this type of content? Did I say intimidate? Oh my gosh, is that another thing that I fucked up? See, this is good. This is why... Like, showing this on stream before I press go public on YouTube? Only I love this, perhaps, unintentionally. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, it was over here, right? <laughs> Very intimate. <laughs> for each data center that harken back to old school MMO environments. Personally, I love this perhaps unintentional effect on the community, but I'd love to know the developers' thoughts on this, whether it was intended or expected, and can we hope to see more of this type of content in the future that forces players together in unexpected ways. It was definitely deliberate, not having an in-game system that could form groups. We wanted the players to actively talk to each other, form groups, and make friends even, in each data center. We felt that if we had everything prepared system-wise and had prepared some sort of automatic way to match up with people, it sort of takes away from the charm of MMORPGs from the good old days. And of course we have many different convenient elements within Final Fantasy, but they felt it would be nice to sometimes have that extra hassle, and that was the thought pattern that went into Eureka in general. In terms of future plans, we touched upon it earlier with challenging content, but we do have different ideas, but at this current time we can't tell whether or not we'll have exactly this content or not, but we are definitely planning for playable content that is something that is very unlike to what we've been doing in 14, and I think it's something that that players can be really excited for. This current right, time so we pattern like that really of a MMO we had in each answer, but there are a couple things that I want to like touch on here. So, okay. Um, so it not having an in-game system, I think is kind of cool. I do understand that it is quite of a hassle, but without that hassle, we never would have had these like awesome Discord servers, these Discord communities, this whatever, outside of the game communities that have formed with Eureka and BA, right? So I feel like that's kind of cool. Um, and I personally really like that, obviously, because I'm an old lady and I actually played MMOs before they had these insane matchmaking systems and that was like the norm or whatever. So I remember what it's like to have those types of communities on your servers, on your data centers, whatever, right? So for me, I, I like that, you know, like I understand some people don't like it. I don't, you know, some people don't like how not easy it is or whatever to form the group, but I don't know. I like it. That's my opinion. Okay. Um, so right here where he says data center, we, um, so we felt that if we had everything prepared system wise and prepared some sort of automatic way, sort of takes away that charm of old school Emma or whatever. MMOR Pajgas from the, the good old days. Um, and so he touches on the fact that they do have a lot of convenient systems in the game, right? We have Duty Finder, we have Party Finder, we have this and that, that allows us to do a lot of the content with that stuff. Uh, he said it would be nice to sometimes have the extra hassle. And that's kind of the thought pattern that goes into Eureka in general. And so, especially with what you guys have been talking about in chat, when it comes to Eureka, how a lot of you are like, oh my God, it's grindy, or oh my God, it's just too much effort, it's too hard, and whatever, whatever. I think it's good to have a mix of that type of content. You know, like you have the convenient, easy to access content that, you know, most people generally don't have a hard time getting into and eventually clearing whatever they're doing, right? So that's Duty Finder, that's Party Finder. And then there's the content that is perhaps a little bit harder for the average person to do. And this comes in the form of Ultima, or Ultimate, excuse me, Ultimate Challenge, or Ultimate Difficulty uh, Challenges. It comes in the form of Eureka, which isn't necessarily a difficult, uh, like, uh, how, should, how do I explain this? Like a difficult thing to clear or whatever. It's just difficult in the fact that it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of like consistent whatever schedule to keep up with it if you were into being there on day one or whatever you know like it's just um content that isn't handed to you on a silver platter you know and i think that a lot of games nowadays and a lot of like the gaming community expects that type of content where they kind of want that instant gratification they want uh things to be like super easy and I think we get that a lot in this game, especially when it comes to the events and stuff, right? Everyone's always complaining, oh my gosh, like the event was so easy, I got the mount or whatever, like after three quests and that's it. 
But then at the same time, those same people will complain if it's too hard or if it's too whatever. So I think them having like both coins of the, or both sides of the coins covered, I guess, I don't know, uh, makes sense. And I don't know. I kind of appreciate that they still take things that may seem like a hassle or may have a lot of these pain points that tr they're talking about, but still offer them because I feel like the game would be really fucking boring without all that stuff, you know? Without a little bit of resistance here and there in what you're playing, it would be so boring and literally everyone would finish everything in a week and then just not play, right? And so I kind of appreciate that Eureka was a little bit against the grain. Uh, it was a little bit, a little bit harder to like get through and even get to the end and so i don't know i kind of like that i kind of hope they keep that many different um, convenient elements i do like what they say here so from what i understand from this first part of the the sentence is that they don't entirely know exactly what the new eureka or whatever version is going to be but this part is really cool so it's something that is very unlike what we've been doing in Final Fantasy XIV. So that kind of like, my, my tinfoil brain is kind of going like insane with that question because earlier they talk about how they took the best parts out of Diadem, they took the best parts out of Eureka and fixed a lot of the pain points or whatever. And it's going to be something we haven't seen before, which is, I don't know, what <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV Battle Royale, could you imagine? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of excited for it. Like, I understand that perhaps they don't have, like, the full plans solidified or in place or whatever. And they probably won't have those plans, like, even beginning until the expansion releases. But it's really interesting. I think when they say something, like, very unlike what we've been doing, they usually deliver on that. Because I feel like with Ultimate, um, a lot of people had didn't really have, like grand expectations of ultimate because of the previous difficulty of the content and how when they explained that it would be like super hard and then they went into UCOB the first time everyone was like super pleasantly surprised and like loved it right so i kind of think it's something like that where i don't think they've ever really disappointed us when they've said it's going to be something like new it's going to be something that's like different than what we've done before and i can appreciate the way that they've grown from like doing Diadem, which I hated, to Eureka, I can definitely see like the, the similarities in a lot of things, but also the like improvements that they made. And so if they're gonna continue on that trend of just taking the best parts out of all of these things that they've tried, listening to the feedback, I have a feeling like that's gonna be something really cool too. So I don't know, maybe it's all like the hype words and like the buzzwords and stuff really, you know, they get to me or whatever and I get super excited for it, but I am looking forward to it. That's it. But we do have different ideas, but at this current time, we can't tell whether or not we'll have exactly this content or not. But we are definitely planning for playable content that is something that is very unlike to what we've been doing in 14. And I think it's something that players can be really excited for. That's it. And that concludes my interview with Yoshi P. If you have any questions or comments, please hit me up at Twitter at mtqcapture.com or on twitch.tv slash mtqcapture. As always, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you in 5.0. All right, we did it. We did it. Um, so that was it, guys. Thank you so much for being the guinea pigs for my interview video. I will be putting that up on YouTube as soon as I am finished with stream because that's how long it'll take me to re-render it again to fix those two errors that I had. Um, and then you guys can just look at it or whatever at your leisure if you want. Um, Pog self-promotion, yeah. Shameless self-promotion. Um, yeah, it was pretty exciting. Like, I, it's really cool being able to talk to him directly. Um, it's scary and intimidating for sure, but it's, it's cool to kind of see a little bit more insight into how the dev team works, you know, because I feel like for the most part, we're pretty lucky, especially with our live letters, like we're pretty lucky at being, uh, I guess, told how things are coming or how things are coming along or whatever. Did I say dot com? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I feel like generally, especially compared to some other games that we won't mention, 
Um, I feel like we get a, a pretty decent line of communication with a lot of like the community managers, the dev team itself. Uh, so it's really cool to kind of take that to another level and just actively be able to interview him directly, right? And there obviously are time limitations, so I couldn't possibly ask him every single question I wanted. Um, but it's cool. Like, it's cool that they offer that to us, I think. And how did he address me? Uh, I don't know. I don't honestly remember. <laughs> I was kind of in a daze. Uh, by the way, Miz is going to be on work to game on Wednesday. I am actually. So I, on Wednesday stream, instead of, uh, my stream being like active at the time, I'm going to host work to game and I'm going to be on their podcast and then we'll have normal stream if there's time after, but I, it depends. We'll see how long we talk. <laughs> um, what else? I should upload the commentary. Oh, you mean like the additional discussion? but then they'll see all of the errors that I made. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I could, I could definitely do it.